Welcome everyone to our August Council meeting. I declare the meeting open. Um, call for apologies. I don't know if anyone's missing. No apologies. Move on to item three then. Confirmation of the minutes of the order meeting held on the 23rd of July 2020. They were circulated by email. Someone have a look at those. Thank you, Councillor Irving. Second, Councillor Walker. Councillor Irving. Any further comments, questions? So we'll put that in that case, we'll put, put the those minutes of pure and accurate record. All those in favour, against, carried. We're going to vote forward, declare the disclosure of interest. Any interest to be disclosed? Councillor Powell? Declaring an interest in the uh, local traffic committee. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any further disclosure of interest in any of the further reports to be tabled? That being the case, we'll note Councillor Taylor's interest in the traffic committee minutes. Moving on to the mayoral minutes, there are a number of um, items I wish to report to you. The first of those being that the general manager and I have used the council seal to move forward with the appropriation of land on which the new public toilet can be built in Dubbo Street from um, the pharmacist so that that project might move forward. We just need to note that um, so that everyone understands that that did occur. So the recommendation is, or the note of the recommendation is that the general manager and mayor were required to use council seal under clause, the appropriate clause, the local government act 1993, to place the seal on a plan of subdivision of land being purchased by council for a public toilet in Dubbo Street. The recommendation is that the council approve the use of the seal under that clause to allow the registration of a land subdivision. So I'm happy to Move that. Someone to second. Councillor Bruce. Any further questions, comments before we put that? <coughs> All those in favour? Yes. Carried. Just a mayoral minute. Uh, that, as discussed with councillors in relation to the general manager appointment process, as per Council's resolution 2020. Local government management solutions have been appointed, and my recommendation is there that council approve the appointment of local government New South Wales management solutions to undertake the recruitment of a new general manager. Um, council will be, will be aware that we've been getting people up to speed with that, and we had discussions, and um, they appear to be the front runners in terms of getting us the sort of candidate that we want to take on that position. and. Um, to expedite that process, I've <coughs> undertaken to sign off with local government management solutions that they get the process underway and the first ads will be appearing tomorrow. So it's uh, underway with a plan to have finally used towards the middle to the end of October. I think it's about the 19th of October. So there's a process to go through about three or four weeks of advertising, then a short list as we the committee that we selected from one member from each riding, each board, and uh, and we'll go from there. So I'm just asking that councillors endorse the, the recommendation that council approve the appointment of local government New South Wales management solutions to undertake the recruitment of a new general manager. I'm moving that. Second, Councillor Taylor. Any further comments, questions before we put that? All those in favour? Against Kerry. The other matter that comes as a mail minute that has discussed with um, the councils in relation to the gym fees at one of the workshops or the workshop we had during the uh, during August. 
relate in relation to gym fees, um, we sent out a letter as a result of the restrictions put in place, as just to, we, we just alluded to in terms of manning the gym with the COVID marshal, that we decided that it was worthwhile restricting the hours of gym use so that we could live within our budget. To that end, the gym use was restricted, but we did also write to all gym users indicating that that was going to be the case. They could seek a refund of their gym membership or they could seek to extend the gym membership by whatever the appropriate program time period was. Um, for your information, there have been none who sought a refund, and then people have, as I understand it, been we understand where we, where we are and I'll be grateful that the gym can actually continue to be used in many ways. So my recommendation there to count that council approve the action taken to write all gym members to all gym members and offer an extension of membership <coughs> or refund as contained in the minutes of the sporting facilities committee meeting. So I'm happy to second that. Thanks to Councillor Derek. <coughs> Any further discussion? Comment? Being advanced, I'll put that. All those in favour? Against? Carried? And the final one is that a notice to all the councillors for their information that I had a meeting along with Macquarie River Food and Fibre and Narrowmine Shire Council with the Federal Water Minister, Minister Pitt, last Thursday. It was into relations to basically two issues. Um, understanding that the Macquarie River in the Murray Darling Batterson Authority had been overbought in terms of water recovery. Um, with an indication from the, the Minister and his advisor um, that that was certainly the case and it was the, of the order of um, 40 gigalitres of water over recovery. So that's essentially, in terms of the liability, 80 gigalitres of license. There was a pretty frank admission that, that had been, the, the mark had been overshot. Um, and particularly referencing the fact that water from the quarry doesn't really get to the Murray Darling, well, sorry, Murray Darling system unless there's a flood. And uh, they understood all, all of that um, and no argument there. The second part of the whole problem though is how do you get that water back into or license back into productive use? And that's where the difficulties will lie. They see a number of roadblocks. In, in the way. Um, my view is that Mr Wong bought a lot of water with no plan and no regrets. If you can buy it that way, someone in the political sphere has to have the guts to say we've got it wrong, we need to just unwind that. And uh, easier said than done, but there at least is an acceptance at the federal government level that water in Macquarie was over overboard. So that's more just for information than, than anything else. Any further? I'll ask for any questions on that one if anyone has any questions. Is there any discussion on the on the level being moved up? That was uh, that's more a state government matter, Council Beach. But um, yes, that and the Indian Re Regulator were raised with the Minister. He has undertaken to liaise with Mr. Payton, the state minister. And I mean, really, the, the solution is a, a whole lot of things coming together to make the whole system more efficient. You know, that includes things like government for you know, it's, all, it's all part of the one, one deal, really. And so he's, uh, yeah, he was interested in that concept. He hadn't heard it before, potentially moving the 100% level of bar on 100%. He said, so, yeah. Got it, and uh, yeah. So we hope we hope for the you know enough people knowing about those things at at the highest level to make things happen. But as you know, we going back a little bit, we had an undertaking from Minister Pavey for her staff to come out to Warren just pre-COVID and meet with us, and she wanted to know if they hadn't been here within a week. Well, COVID puts into that at that time, but I will get we have that back on the agenda <coughs> now. And I'm waiting for this with that. And the general manager's made a couple of calls to Ash Alden, who's the Premier Department and Premier in Cabinet. And um, I haven't had a response yet, but we can't get that back on the agenda, I'm sure.
Okay, that was just for information. Those were the mirror minutes. We'll move on to item six, the reports of the committees. And the first of those, the committee of the Warren Public Arts Committee held on Tuesday, the 6th of August. <coughs> Council Williams, you have to move that. Second. So that sounds absurdity. Council Williamson. I'm um, just moving the recommendation, but I'll just keep you up on stage a little bit. The, um, the tendering for the for the um, for the water tower that closes on the seventh of September. Now that we sent out eight applicants, Jay did that nine, and now that we've had seven to eight people reply back with information, very keen to go forward with the project and give us quotes. We've had two phone hookups, Jody and myself. Um, very interesting, like some very talented people and. People are very impressed the way the professionalism of council's going through the county process to make sure everything's right. Um, and yeah, so hopefully on the 7th of September we get some very, some very good tenders and we can have a look at them and go forward. So yeah, everything's going, going forward. Thank you, Mr. Lennon. Question, Councillor Bull. Uh, a question about the painting the tower. When, when the references to painting the tower, are they to, for one of a better term, undercoat the tower to give it a, to make it a, a uh, canvas or to actually paint artwork on it. Which is, what, what's the quote actually, or the tender actually for? It can be split up the way they want. In the tender as well, when the artist comes through with more, more questions for council, those questions then get answered and sent to all, all artists. Yeah. I sent through a video yesterday through Jody of an uh, artist to show what he does. He actually cleans it, he primes it, he paints it. Some artists do everything, some artists don't. So in the tendering document, they might put in for a quote to paint the tower by itself, but they'd expect council to prime it and clean it. That, this all comes through the process. All different artists have got all the different types of what they do. So, and also you've got artists which are producers, which I've only learned a little bit about producers. So producers like project media, but they're very hard. Um, so if you want to put it that way. But very smart, very good. Um, one person we talked to yesterday was the, uh, he does all the street art organisation for Cameron. So you're getting some very good artists. And that, that comes through one of the committee members who organised these artists' names for us. And that's how we put that sort of intent in the process. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of background going on. Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm just wondering, two breaths, is you've taken on the, um, Policy from the arts. Yep, yeah, that's from the art law center. Yep, yeah, that's correct. So that's the process that you that you you follow with all these um, artworks that you put out a tender for. The biggest thing is you get art, which is fine. But how long does that art stay there for? Who owns the art? Mm -hmm. What all the dialogue ones through it? Um, New South Wales have done, they've done all the hard yards. They've probably had corporate lawyers go right through the whole process. Yeah. Imagine what they've been through. So it's easy to just get onto another policy and go through that policy. Um, that policy can be changed down the track if we'd like we change our policies all the time <coughs> through Warren Strike Council. But to get this committee going and go forward, yeah. it's easy to just get another policy which is already out there, which is proven. Yeah. And that's why we've taken that policy on without taking it to bids, because I, I, there's a lot more smarter people out there than us to do one of these policies. So the council is sort of the commission, you know, it's got the overall for everything, for the budget, <coughs> the decisions. And yes. Yeah. Council comes back to you, we make the decision what goes there. The committee will do recommendations to council. It's council's final decision what happens, it's not the committee's. And council so always makes the final decision. You're trying to do local or? Oh, this is a different project. Uh, the, when you have a, if you have a, I'll, I'll show you a video, I'll show you a video halfway through. These are very talented people. Like Warren has got very talented artist chef, yes, but not doing, not doing a silo like this. It's a, it's a, it's a specialised field when you start looking at it. So I think for us, we have got other art, we'll put it around town, we'll do it, we're going to do a master plan of the town, which we'll have way through setting up now. And we'll have areas where it can be painted on walls. That could be that could be our stuff done through youth council through through programs. There's a lot of stuff can happen after this. This is our first project. Want to do it right? You don't want to. 
he don't not do it right. So it's, a, it's a focal bit of town till it's right where everyone's going to see it. So it's got to come right. Well, I suppose you look at the silo trail that people talk about, and you know, people from overseas, <coughs> or, yeah, they're very talented, they've all done those works. So. One thing with the two book ups with the people on the phone, sorry, Mr. Mead, through you, is they're very impressed that we've got a design that we want. Like, a, a, we, we've got a, we've got a um, clear vision of where we're going. Like the sporting theme, the white got a sporting theme which for the Carter Over Precinct. Very impressive that because a lot of times these people turn up and no one's got an idea what they want on their silos. So, and they're going to work with the community. This year they already know what the project will be, it'll be a sport, and it's going to be what sports are going to be played up in that area. So, they know where they're going. So, that's, a, that's an impressive part. We have got a bit of a budget, we can't disclose what budget it is, which we're not telling, which no one knows. If in that budget, we might be only able to pay the top of the tower. We, we don't know what we're going to get. It's, it's a bit of a, we just don't know. So it's all new to everyone, actually. So we're going forward to it and hopefully we get to agree. It's going to be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bruce. Can I just ask, Councillor Bruce, what's the lifetime of expectancy on the paint work on these murals? Do you know? Or do they put that into their, their quote when they. <laughs> Does anyone sort of know about? You might get five to ten years of dreams to work. It, it all depends on the paint quality. Um, if they're going to spray paint, apparently spray paint doesn't last as long as rolling paint. We're trying to get some of the paint by hand. We mm. think that'd be the most logical way of doing it. And if you put a sealer over the top, like mm. this is all new to me. Yeah. yeah. So these are questions what we're asking pretty long about all the community. And as well. then when it needs to be repainted, correct? How uh, artists come from that? Um, it's up to the committee, up to the council. They don't actually don't own the art because that's mm -hmm. the idea of all this art thing here. We yeah. actually will be owning the art, knowing the. Because apparently, when they do a design for a concept, and that'll be out, we pay for that concept design, and that'll be our yeah. thing. So, but five years down the track or ten years down the track, council might want to change the design of, the town, of that town too. They might want to change it to something else. So, you, if you find out how much it's going to cost to do the project, then you can plan for future for a budget to do what you've got to do. So it might, like, I, I won't even guess what the price is going to be, but then down the track and say, okay, we're going to need 10 years' time, so much money to paint that. So over the next 10 years' time, we're going to ask council to put away so much per year into the arts council to make sure these projects are all, we can go back around and do them up mm. without looking shabby. Because that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Like, very, very um, mindful of that as well. So this is going to be a long-term plan. So you've got to have these long-term plans in place so you can actually do this. <laughs> This is all new to us. Yeah. It's very new, so we've got to look properly. Very mindful of that. I've got two other councils on there. Well, we'll be very mindful of that as well. So hopefully, when we come back to council next month, we'll have a hopefully someone to recommend to go forward um, and have some plans in place. I, I think the council we need to have great faith in this committee because they're doing a lot of homework. The community input is good. I think it's a big learning curve for everyone because of course we haven't, haven't been there, but this committee's, you know, they're, they're making contact with the people who are really good at this thing, this sort of thing, and, and learning a lot along the way. I, I believe we're going to end up with a fantastic result at the end. It's a matter of working through and let that committee tick off every box, get all the information that they need so that it's really just done absolutely to the best standard so that it, it is something that someone alluded to, people do want to come and have a look at it. Um, so, um, okay. Any further questions, discussion before we put that? Minutes of the public art team. Put that, all those in favour, against, Gary. Moving on to the meeting of the Airport Operations Committee held on the 6th of August. Someone to move that, Councillor Williamson. Councillor Taylor the second, Councillor Williamson. I completely the recommendation, I just kept people it's all in the recommendation there, but as we got that funding, um, when we got through to the um, what the attendance for the project, we only ended up with one. So we're negotiating with that negotiation, negotiating now with that tender to try and get things in the line what our budget is, which is very mindful money, so the money's going to come that way. That's where that one's up to. Next one is the second terminal building. And that sort of goes in with the next down flying skills, big flight training more as well. So we're, we're doing all that as well. So it's very positive. 
there's some positive stuff happening. Um, there's another, as previous me, there is another hangar, hangar being put there, hopefully shortly in the next month we'll start. Um, that gas is going in, it's the pad's getting done now, it should be up and running in two or three weeks. Um, our RNAVs, which is being reported in there, which is our flying in um, low and bad weather, that the company who um, we originally saw, they went bankrupt. We didn't give them any money, so we haven't lost money, that's the bonus. So the other two companies we're negotiating with now do our RNAVs as well. So the project is going forward, it's just, um, it's just a little slow up moment, that's all. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments, questions before we put the recommendation? No, that being the case, I put that all over the paper against <coughs> Carrie. Moving on to the third of the reports of the committees, that being the local traffic committee minutes. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Councillor Powell. <coughs> There's someone to move the recommendation there, but also an additional point that Councillor Derrick be uh, appointed as the second delegate to the traffic committee. So I'm happy to move that with the addition of Councillor Derrick, Councillor Bruce, Councillor Beach. Councillor Derrick. Uh, yes. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm going to ask after the, the movement second to move that just for some information on that traffic committee meeting, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it was my first traffic committee meeting, which was a really good experience, um, and I was really, I guess, maybe surprised and um, reassured by how much input traffic New, South, traffic New South Wales does have with that meeting. Um, they were particularly helpful with some signage discussions that we had. Um, and also Sergeant David Marr was there, so we had some good input as well. Um, just with the recommendations, so I think um, we did discuss at the last council meeting regarding the traffic change um, along the Community Road, that we wanted a letter to be sent to landholders along the Community <coughs> Road. So I would like to add that into the recommendation if that's more right. Um, so something along the lines of the landholders along the Clinton Road be directly notified in writing. So I understand the change has already taken place and I'm not sure if we, we had discussed that letter a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not sure if that has been done in the meantime, but yeah, we did Councilor, discuss Councilor. that and agreed that would be a good idea. Just to check, we said Councillor Bruce and Councillor Bridge happy with that? Yeah. To go into the, into the um, recommendation? Yeah. Um, and just a couple of other slight changes to that um, first article 4.1. Um, so just with point two, I don't think we need the words be endorsed at the end. And where it says D transport for New South Wales at item four, um, removes the B. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Councillor, we're aware of the recommendation there. There are basically three. So, we've dealt with the changes to the traffic flow at the intersection at Corinda Road and um, bypass. Uh, the second one is the change of parking direction on Burton Street adjacent to the Tate. So, the recommendation there is that we have parallel parking as we do have on the Western side, um, St Mary's side. So I think that's a, yeah, when I come across that bridge, you notice how tight that area is on the left and trucks, particularly just cut that angle fairly, fairly fine. So I think that is an extremely reasonable um, way to go. And the third one, a loading zone. Councillor Tyler was expressing a, a, a conflict of interest there and, and excused himself, but I think it makes good sense mm -hmm. as that needs that area to be a loading zone so that people understand that it's a loading zone that he can access, um, which can access his um, business. Uh, thank you, Councillor Derek. Um, sorry, just three minutes ago, just regarding that loading zone, so there are the two businesses that have been using that 
area of that domain, it's a learning zone, so it's really formalizing the, the use that's already there and yeah, adjusting the signage, so that's the yeah. Any further comments? First question is the changes to Burton Street are sensible, no doubt, um, but that seems to have come about because of the um, the new building at the at St Mary's Catholic School there. So, I, if the changes are to cover off uh, an obvious safety issue, why doesn't the school just park back around the corner? And I'm not saying it's not the right move to do, but why, why, why aren't they um, encouraging their staff to pack, park back in the corner where they always used to park? It's only, you know, that, that 50 metre walk is not going to kill anyone. But the increased traffic across that highway there um, could be, regardless of whether there's parallel parking or reverse parking in that situation. It seems to me that there's many, many more cars on, on that. Um, both sides of that road right now, and I think that St Mary should be encouraged to park, they, they start to park around on a quieter street rather than on the highway. That's my personal position on that. Oh, and the other issue is the number of children who have been dropped off. People pull up very quickly on, on the TAFE side, and, mm -hmm. and children are guilty of racing across the road and not using that pedestrian crossing, and, um, and it makes them, if that if that's occurring, the fact that they're not that they're parallel parked, at least gives oncoming traffic a little, a little bit more time to, to see to, uh, take on view you entirely. I'm also suggesting that maybe council writes to the school and encourages the staff to park around the corner where it's quieter rather than on the highway and, and, and point out to the school that, that we've identified that there's a safety issue, hence the change in traffic. Um, and that the school should encourage their staff to park around the corner where it's quiet. I'm going to ask the move and second up. Okay. Well, have you just <laughs> <laughs> No, I just maybe add to that. Yes. Where does it um, pick up the drop off the children? Should yes. maybe be back around in Lawson yes. Street and not at the front entrance there? Is it? Is yeah, they're picking up from the front. I'm not aware of the pick up signs. But they wouldn't be picking up on the highway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. so, so, the the drop off zone is to be moved, moved <coughs> to go to the traffic conditions. But I think that intuitively, if, if parents were encouraged to drop off in Wilson uh, Street, um, that would be a whole lot. Well, that's where our kids were picked up when they went to school, so I don't see why things have to change. It's to me, just before you said that, there's someone go and have a look. I just think I don't you know, have much to do, but I look at it and I think to, to do what they're saying, Andrew, they have to go through a whole lot of construction work and, 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 and dirt. And that. I'm just saying that the, the, what they used to do may not be the right way at the moment until all the construction and it's all finished. I know the problem, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but just a bit of casework before that then seem to see that that yes. deep that that and, well, and I, that I, walkway is still <coughs> able to be done. Yeah, but I thought the council can't tell the school what to do. All I'm suggesting is that we encourage the school to park and to pick up in, in the quieter street rather than the highway. And if they don't want to do that, that's their business. We can't make them. Councillor Drews, Councillor Councillor Birch. You have me just a letter to go along those lines. Yeah, well, yes, I think, well, I think the letter doesn't hurt anyway, but I'm just to think to find it probably wouldn't hurt that <coughs> as well. To find out through the time of the letter go yeah. to yeah. understand what, what the longer term plan is. I think so, like it's probably yeah. obviously so. Don't, don't, don't jump the gun. Jump yeah. The gun. yeah. It's um, about the ego now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Absolutely. Thank you, Council Order. Sorry, I just threw you some air. I'm just going to as Council was suggesting to do some investigation before we send a letter. Um, I know there was a period of time, I'm not sure if it's still the case, where children were actually having to be brought to parents in their cars. So um, the parents were having to wait in the car for their children to be brought because of COVID restrictions. So that could be another factory what's happening at the moment. So. Okay, we find out the facts before we, <laughs> we jump the gun on that. Okay. 
Thank you. Councillor Um Christian, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councillor Jarrett. Um, with the, um, the loading sign, I'm just, just thinking I was concerned about the um, access side of the lane because it's narrow and there are um, private residences, I guess, who have access to their houses um, yeah, from that lane and whether there's any safety issue that was discussed at the meeting in relation to getting out if in the event of an emergency um, and there's something there blocking them because of the loading zone, was that, is that an issue? Um, through you, Mr Mayor, we didn't discuss that particularly, but my understanding is that the residents along that lane haven't had any concerns um, and the concerns have maybe been to people trying to move down that lane when there are trucks there. Um, so I guess one, one thing that we did discuss was the signage actually coming out of the spa car park that currently says one way, but that is in fact two way at that point. So if a vehicle was coming out of the spa car park, notice the truck, they could easily turn right to, to avoid that lane. Um, as far as the safety um, for the residents along that road, uh, that lane, it wasn't particularly discussed, but um, as I said, I'm not aware that they've ever raised any particular concerns. Um, we did discuss at length um, with the Court of Transport for New South Wales um, and also such a mark. So, yeah, I'm very comfortable with the decision. Um, is it appropriate for us to send a letter to those, um, the residents of that back onto that lane um, to inform them? Or is that the requirement of the procedure? The manufacturing yeah. indicates to me that it will be advertised. Yes. Yeah, so I, that, I think that's probably um, I'll take it, it I'll, I'll make it to need to send a letter, but, but if it's advertised, I think that's, and we'll see that people will see the signs, I think that's mm -hmm. a fair, fair indication. <coughs> yeah. Do you have any idea that letters should be sent? I think, I <coughs> think they would, would be, if you were living on that land and if yep. you, I think there's one resident, I guess, in particular I'm thinking of that does use that as an access into their, yeah. Um, and through, through, yeah. 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 The park there for you know and loaded with films on anyway. So there's no change to behaviour, it's just a lot of signs. I think sometimes it's at the moment good for us to do on the side of course you can send a letter and uh, it's done. Yeah. So councillor sorry councillor's um reason um you happy to have a, a letter sent along the line just informing yeah, people along yeah. Cobb Lane that the Whole, the process of a loading um, area has been formalised. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any further comments, questions before we put that? So the recommendations are that being the case, I'll put that. All those in favour? Against? Carried? Someone might. Yeah, thank you. Can yeah. invite Councillor. Taylor back into the meeting. Moving on to the report of the meeting of the Sport Facilities Committee on Wednesday, the 4th of August. Someone had to remove those minutes and the recommendation. <coughs> um, 
and I'm happy to move in that case, and someone to second then, please. <laughs> Councillor Higgins. Um, I think we alluded to in the Barrel Minutes the um, question of gym fees and, and gym user fees, so that I think we'll cover the top on that. The only one that we discussed was um, in relation to funding there, uh, and I think the information is in, in front of you. Um, I don't think there's anything particular uh, that stands out. Just knowing that the evacuated air conditioning, the one on the southern end, has been replaced uh, with last year, I think. And so the budget is to replace this one on the centre of the, the building. <coughs> um, beyond that, it's, um, the whole facility has been used really well. I was here one night. There was there were people in the gym. There was a downstairs exercise group occurring. Nick Hall was right over here and uh, over playing and yoga yeah, was happening up here. So it was over 20 plus years later, it's getting used in the way we use it was to be used. The other item that did come to light was the in regard to the um, swimming pool entrance fee and um, the season hasn't started yet, so we can bring that to this council meeting and we're asking council to be more the fact that season tickets be reduced by 25%, um, particularly in line with what happened last year as, a, as a, an act of goodwill. And the second one being that the fee of two dollars be for single entry, it was three and it's come back to two, it was two last year, was it not very That's correct, yes. Yeah. But it's just continuing at two dollars. But what what had had the proposal with Councillor Irving had just needed some investigation and this is the conclusion that supported because all these committee came back to so so it's an equitable um fee reduction for everyone over the um, swimming season. And we'll also note in there that the timeline as regards getting the swimming pool back on track, um I might defer to the manager of health and development just for an update. People will know that a lot of work's been occurring down there and um, the time frame is, uh, is, I believe, still under control. But many health and development might just bring us up to speed as of today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so the fiberglass is on track. Um, the, they've had issues with the delivery of materials, so hopefully that will arrive today. Um, the warmer weather is going to work in their favour, which is a good thing. So, so it's still on track to finish on time, or for the fiberglass, and yes, yep, and then the painting, yes, yep, or they're hoping to start painting Saturday. Okay, yep. excellent, thank you, Councillor Walker. Mr. Mayor, just wondering, there's a thing there that says um, a new pool management procedure for staff. What, what does that entail? Um, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's a management plan um, and it just formalises procedures yeah, on, on how to do day to day. So, this is a, it hasn't, that hasn't been the situation before, is it, this is a totally new. It, it, it was lacking, um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it indicates staffing levels and and how we abide with um, royal life saving and the legislation requirements and ratios and time out and stuff, that, all that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Councillor Walker. Yeah, yeah, I've um, been approached and it concerns the um, arena that's out uh, the race course. I'm just wondering if there's an update on that. There was a concern that possibly the she could not start to be erected because this, there had been sand deposited there already and that was causing a few issues. That's probably a separate community. <coughs> oh, is it? Yeah, it's probably not in the sporting schools, it's showing our race course. I thought they covered. No, no, different, different committee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do, you, do you want to, are you, you comfortable to agree? Yes, okay. <laughs> the general manager. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick update. Because of the recent rain, the project's been put back by three weeks. 
because the drill truck cannot get on site and we just didn't wish to risk the truck being there to drill the deep piers. We have to put, because again, the soil that's there, we will be putting road base around the outside of the arena pad so that we make sure the truck doesn't sink, so <coughs> it does get out. And the issue about sand being on there, the contractors told us there was no issue in forming the flora and putting the sand on. And they've now come back and said that their equipment will not run through the depth of sand that's there. So we will pull the sand back so that they can erect all the steel framing and then put the sand back in. So yes, your information's right, but it's not a major issue as it goes, the biggest issue that's out there is the rain and everything's like jelly at this stage. So it's about three weeks behind and that decision was made with the contract at the beginning of this week. Thank you very much. Just to keep it swimming pool back on that one. Um, the piers that haven't been pulled yet for the Shape structure or not? It was, still, it was wet for that as well. You, but that's what you prompted me on. Just <laughs> yeah, all the concrete piers are in. Again, there was a delay on that, and we pushed that back for the erection of the shade shelters. It'll occur around about the twelfth, fifteenth of next month. You can't quite think of the date, but the reason for that is they need a large crane to erect to be put in the steel pylons. Um, and we're not prepared to put a crane on that ground at this stage on the risk of tipping the crane. So I know farmers might want a little bit more rain, but we would like to stay away for a couple of weeks so we can get in there and complete that. But, but that will be completed well before the end of September as well. <coughs> Thank you um, to the Manager of Health and Development on that update. Um, I'm not sure if I'm... So the staff management plan is just, just, um, are we just formalising what's already in place? Is that pretty much through you, Mr. Man? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And one other question, Mr. Man, if that's okay, um, is to do... Uh, to, um, who is to do... Sorry. Oh, you're not ready. Wait, So it's just to do with updating people on um, consultation. So um, it was really um, helpful to have Nicole Risley at our um, last sporting facility committee meeting. Um, she's able to shed light on some of the concerns that. Um, the Warren Amateur Smith Club had. So, just to um, in reading forward on that, um, the Manager of Health and Development will be um, liaising directly with them um, in the future. Just thought I'd update you on that. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Ogan. <coughs> Any further comments, questions before we put the minutes of the uh, recommendation this morning to this committee meeting? That being the case, put that all those in favour against carried. Moving on to the next meeting hall on Tuesday, the 18th of August. Does someone have to do those minutes mm -hmm. of the recommendation? The recommendation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone to do those? Mm -hmm. Councillor Bruce, thank you. Second. I'm just happy to move the recommendation. Thank you. Just my question would be to the Manager of Development. How did we progress with the, uh, or have we progressed with the environmental trust? Asking for an extension of time for the motorway step over. Yep, it was requested yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. well, it's on the yep. I know the meeting was only a couple of days ago, so a week, a week ago. Uh, yep. And will that, is, is your view that that'll be looked upon by people? I believe so, yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
Anybody comments, questions on Just that? Just following up on yes. three, Mr. Mayor, so what's how what extension of time? How, how long would you? Um, I, I suppose to, I think it was the the end of January. Oh, yeah. cool. Then you time to just hope for big rain for me. Oh, no rain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a comment to that. The, I'm working on the final stages of the retaining wall right at this moment. Um, and I would imagine we'll be well and truly out of there by um, the end of November with, with the design on that, that, um, that construction subject to, to quotations and which way we decide to construct the, the, uh, the facility. So for you, Mr. Mayor, so I did receive that in, um, the email. So the GFT follow up has not come through yet with all the investigations that we asked for when we went there. To, there were going to be more boards, yeah, yeah. samples and bits and pieces. There was no more boards implemented because of the consistency with the three three boards that were undertaken. They were just able to vary the condition or vary, move the relocate the wall further back mm -hmm. to allow for um, Enlargement of the green area where the existing is. Mm -hmm. right, so everything's been sweetened like that. Um, and let's go to the next committee meeting. Okay. So, so when we, sure. it's true, Mr. Mayor, when will we be looking at the next committee meeting? Once through, Mr. Mayor, once I've got the final design, the design. I'll, I'll uh, go through the committee. Yep. Um, I may start chasing expressions of interest in the meantime, mm -hmm. um, just to sort of keep, keep the project on the move for what it's really important. In as soon as possible, if I can go to the committee with a suggestion or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor. In relation to item 4.1, um, on specific works, um, it says on the council chamber's um, budget is um, 1.7 million. <coughs> Just the party and that. Um, the initial budget was 1.4 million, and the council resolved um, 300,000 more towards it. So the total project will come out to 1.7 million. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments, questions on the uh, <coughs> next committee meeting? <coughs> that being the council for that, all those in favour, against okay. Moving on to report to the delegates to council. First of all, it's been the interagency support service meeting. And the report there, meeting held on Bernard Brooks. Someone to read that delegate report. <laughs> oh, Councillor Derek, Councillor Order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor, for capturing the minutes. Uh, it was a well attended meeting. Um, so, yeah, definitely very worthwhile having these interest meetings. Um, and we have set dates for the next um, <coughs> as well. Um, I think uh, everything that's included in the minutes basically is on top of what's discussed. Uh, if anyone has any questions or lack of more information, please do you let us know. Thank you, Councillor Derek. Any further, any further comments, questions regarding the agency support? Oh, sorry, Could I just on ask you um, yes. to Mr. Mayor, um, in the hell of the outreach midwife, um, just want to find out a bit more about what her role is. Um, does she, yeah, like, does she go out visiting Mums after the baby babies, just want to find out a bit more. I believe that that is part of her role. So she's um, one day a week in Warren um, and working quite closely with Tina Robinson, the baby health nurse, with um, yeah, providing lots of resources for the pregnant women and after they've had the baby. So she's um, quite busy at the moment. Okay. Lots, of, uh, lots of babies coming coming up in the next, um, the next six months or so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. See her, and so she, um, yeah, I believe she was going to see through some further information um, to go over the minutes with the agency group. I don't know if we've seen that yet, but 
Yeah, she's facing, she's facing for more than at least one day at the moment. So is that a public, that's true, that New South Wales Hill is a little bit It's true, it's Can I just follow on through this? I mean, I'll put that, she did give us an information sheet and I'll pass it to Cassie, but she um, also, because I've got first hand experience with Jules, with Jules, who's expecting that she will also, if there's any issues, she, um, that particular person, pregnant person, will go to Dubbo. She yeah. can refer them to Dubbo to see specialists or doctors or obstetricians down there um, if she's got any concerns, which seems to work really well. And it's good for the person if they take it up. But they get to know some of the people in Dubbo in that area. Yeah. And she yeah, she's she's she seems really lovely and she says she is very busy. It's also and I don't put it in the myth, but it's a lot of talk between the people that are there for what services that they do bring and there's so many. Mm. There's so many in Warren and getting it out there, that information, that's always sort of discussed. And we thought maybe given that the new centre might have this board, then that, that might be a way of getting, a, a, you know, people will see that, I don't know how they, they might, if, if they agree to do it, to put up at so and so here today, or, um, because there's a lot of services, I don't think a lot of people probably know exist in the town. And I just think it's a great <coughs> service, terrific to see things like this with, with rural medicine. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. It's mm -hmm. just not about city centric in the bigger centres. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, to Councillor Walker's point, Councillor Sutton, you put the list together at one stage of all the services going to be, but potentially come to either agency. Change on a regular basis. That's one thing you keep coming to two years later or three years later. Yeah. So one of the things I was every beginning of every year, I have to send all the things out and say, these are the to comes to new people and new services, animals that are finished. So it's, we try to keep it as, as active as we possibly can. So. Mm -hmm. And through you, <coughs> which is Camille Carlin, Council Booming over there, who really work for the earbuds to come back and to their service in town because it's very important to them. Yeah, so it's just regarding the community services directory, that's sort of everything that's worked very hard to keep that up to date. Um, so we do have high copies of that available at various locations also online and circulate through the email network. Um, and just back to the point about the midwife service, I think Services like that mean that people don't always have to leave Warren and there has been concern that people might not be going to appointments that they should be going to if they have to go to Dobbo. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, definitely, definitely saving people a lot of time and making sure people get the service that they need here. So, which is excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further comments, questions before we put them into the interagency <coughs> services, uh, civil services meeting? <coughs> Being the case, put back all those in favour against carried. The second report we have is in regard to the association of mining and energy related councils, and that, that's going to be a verbal report from Council Irving, I believe, or that's it. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's just be a verbal report, isn't it? A second report. Um, yeah, uh, so on the fourteenth of February, um, there was an online meeting. Uh, it was an executive meeting of the association and delegates could attend to observe. But, um, but then they did open it up for discussion um, if someone did have a question. Um, so they had a guest speaker um, and he is heading um, the community engagement and planning of the Central West um, Renewable Energy Zone. Which is, the, which is a pilot project along with the New England one and Southwest New South Wales Renewable Energy Zones. Um, the Central West one um, is the first, will be the first and the first of its kind in Australia. And, um, and he gave a very informative presentation there. So 
Transcript is the leading organisation or company and they are working with the Department of Planning, um, Industry and Environment on that and, um, and, the, and the DPI um, has established a offshoot um, called ENCO, which is short for Energy Corporation and they've invested $40 million into getting that up and running. Um, the project will, um, it's in its initial stages obviously in terms of consultation still and so that's why um, I felt that we could um, send, it. I just sent an email in response to the meeting because um, the fellow Stu Hodgson, Hodgson said that we, we could send emails if we had further questions. So I'm thinking about that, I took him up on that <laughs> offer and um, and uh, then I had um, general manager kind of perused it and checked it for me and it was all good. So thank you general manager. And um, the other thing with the project, um, the Central West Renewable Energy Zone is that there will be opportunities for councils to have um, work um, with the energy companies to establish um, voluntary planning agreements so that we can um, obtain benefits financially, um, sponsoring projects, hopefully um, to assist our, our communities. Um, so that's a good opportunity. And then um, you know, um, he talked about yeah, just unlocking the economic growth in the region through the project and um, the meeting also, there were other things discussed but um, they're in the minutes that you've all been emailed but I found that other councils are also had issues um, with the value, value in general, um, the assessment of the land and the increasing value and its effect on rates and that came up because some of the mining companies and this is you know it's, it's um, of interest is, is that the mining companies have been negotiating with the value of general and um, to to be exempt um, from from paying the rates as a result of the land values being increased on their land so that was of interest and on the other hand there have been um, farmers who have been greatly affected especially in the Forbes Shire and um, by the increase in land values. So that was of interest. And the PhD project, which the Merck are sponsoring um, to help <coughs> um, improve community engagement, it's going to have another, we're going to review it again to make sure it's what we, what we want and whether the money is worth investing into this, um, yeah, this PhD student who is going to look at a project and see how um, all stakeholders involved can come, can come out um, in a grants on a project and um, how that can improve councils with negotiating with community groups. So um, not, I, I think it's appropriate to mention that I had a reply um, from, we had a reply as you might have read from the Executive Officer of, of the Merck and said that um, I guess informally we get nothing formal in place yet unless the general manager has anything to update us on. Um, so we, yeah, I guess with our letter from the Economic Development Committee, with Warren Shire Council has been included in the Renewable Energy Zone, in the Central West Fund, and, um, and also we had the opportunity um, to participate in the Regional Reference Group, um, but at this stage we're not sure how, how that is going to happen, but yeah, hopefully I will should, we should hear more soon. Thank you. For completeness, I think you just note Councillor Irving's um, um, report there verbal. I just got uh, Councillor Irving, you happy to move that? I just probably have we'll have a second there and we just we'll just note that as a verbal report. Councillor Derek second. Sorry, then there are some questions. Was it sorry question? I was just gonna say it's very I think it's a great organisation and I think this this development of us being included, the one shy being included in the West RZ is is potentially very exciting. Yeah, I'm working with the Yeah, so thank you. Any further comments, questions before we put that 
Councillor Irving, we will report the accepted and that be made of it. That being the case, put that all those in favour against carry. Moving on to the policies. And the first of those being the public art design and commissioning policy, which Councillor Williamson alluded to in his report from the uh, Public Arts Committee. Something to move that we adopt that policy. Councillor Williamson, second, Councillor Serby. Councillor Williamson. Oh, just a recommendation, thank you, Mr. Lee. <coughs> Any further questions, discussions regarding the public arts policy? To do with design and commissioning that, that part of it. I'm sure there's much forward parts in the public arts arts uh, policy, but that is where we are. Any further comments or questions before we put that? No. All those in favour? Against carried. Moving on to item two in policy that is regarding leave for civil emergencies, that new policy has been in front of us for, for adoption. Someone have to move that. Councillor Irving, second, Councillor Serby, Councillor Irving. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for our policy. Um, obviously, it's, it's needed. Um, yeah, so thank you. Imagine you want to comment on that one? Just for clarity. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, really, the policy is about um, staff being called to civil emergencies outside the shop. So if we had a section 44 push for an emergency, we would provide, or within our shire, we would provide all our resources and staff as required to fight that. And if it was for three weeks, we would make sure we made that provision. For councillors that might remember a long way back, um, and it's coming back to last season, you know, there was once a hailstorm in Sydney that went for months. And council staff who were in SES and rural fire service and town brigades actually went away for months and councils paid the bills. Over Christmas, we had major section 44 bushfire emergencies. Um, we made some offers for our staff to go and assist, which meant we would have paid because that was an offer and those offers weren't taken up. But if we had a staff member, which we now have some, um, within different services, that service can direct them to go and we must pay the cost. So it's giving the staff member some advice that yes, you can go, but there is a time limit on which council will pay the cost. You couldn't go away for, you know, in November, sitting at, you know, um, Ballina and stay there until February, sort of thing, and council wears the cost. So it's, it's really setting some <coughs> rules for staff that they will get two days paid annual leave to go to a declared civil emergency, but it must be declared by the state. So, you know, if someone outside our council area just says, you know, we've got an emergency or we wish you to come to training or we wish you to do something, council isn't paying the bill, it must actually be a declared emergency. So. You know, some of those are like section 44 bushfire emergencies, major SES <coughs> emergencies, things like that. So it's just putting some rules around that the community isn't paying for long term leave and have to replace. It. That's all. Thank you. Excuse me, I'll just ask you a question, General Manager. So, two days, is that the normal? Is is that being decided by the state of the and council or is that across the board for two days? Uh, just mere two days is reasonable. After that, we need to start to look at how do we replace staff? So we might have to bring in casuals. So someone can be off two days now and we don't bring in any casuals. We don't change work regime. Mm -hmm. you know, and the policy can be changed by council as said, with the bushfires, we actually made an offer mm -hmm. through the state that some of our staff could go because we we're in drought conditions and we had water trucks <coughs> and things like that. That offer can still be there and council can decide, but 
it stops the staff member deciding without getting other approval. So currently the staff member says it's a civil emergency on and off. Some get paid, some don't get paid, um, but it's, you know, they make the decision on the basis of what the state has. If they know they're not going to get paid after two days, they will then determine whether that's relevant or not. You know, and if they still wish to go, yeah, well, I don't see any reason to stop someone going. Um, they've just got to you know what the rules are because we need to have someone back to that position. So, you know, if Darren said he's joined the fire brigade and took off for a month, um, we might be in lots of trouble. <laughs> 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 clear about the, um, the leave entitlements and annual leave and that sort of thing. You say here that, that um, additional um, days may be taken from annual leave that won't be, um, leave their pay won't be granted. Uh, so does that mean that if someone leaves and is away for four days, say, um, the first two leave days, or the first two days are within this policy, does that mean you have the discretion to do what you need to do with the other two days, or will that come out of their annual leave? Yes, Mayor, it comes out of their annual leave. There is no discretion for the Well, you, the word may gives you yeah. headroom to make that call. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It would depend on the emergency, <coughs> and I think we would be talking to council about, you know, there's, there's some major issue occurred somewhere and staff resources are needed for whatever reason. Um, what it stops really is um, if we use the town fire brigades, town fire brigades are paid, they're on a retainer. If they wish to have a training week, they tell their staff they're going on training, the staff go away. And we cover the cost, we pay them, they're on a retainer. They can determine that. Currently, that's currently under this. They will go, well, I'm going for training for two days and I'll either take annual leave or I'll forfeit you know, mm. additional pay. The thing I think, the, the, the point I have though is that a, uh, annual leave is designed for R&R &R and downtime for staff, not for fighting fires. And so they come back off this and surely, well, let's uh, be away from the whole annual leave. They might only have some leave left, or, you know, I mean, so it's an R&R, &R, so you get a, a, a member of your um, staff back and they had it from five fires or something like that. No one wins. No, they're, they're on sick leave now because they're, they're sort of fatigued. So, I don't know, I, I'd like to see that there was some discretion in there where you can say that it's an emergency. Um, you, you can say, well, but I do agree that if someone's paid, he goes, well, you're paid twice. So they're being paid for their time with the retained um, firefighters and they're being paid by council. That doesn't seem splitting, right? Yeah, but it's not fair, Mr. Mayor, and you can have someone working beside them in the SES or the RFS who are not being paid. Mm. So that this is. Um, so why not leave that pay? What's, what's your thinking about leaving that pay? Why not say, okay, you have to leave, but your council won't be paying. Is that an option? You've really it's, ruled it out here. Well, I think it would depend on the situation. If it was, I'm going away for a week's training, <coughs> that's, you know, the town fire brigades declare that as essential as a state issue. The other groups don't. So, but this only covers civil emergency. Yeah. So that's not going to be covered by this policy either. So do you think, I'm not saying this should happen, but do you think there should be some wriggle room in there for leave without pay? in the case where someone's going to use their annual leave to go to fight fires and come back fatigued and you know they don't get they don't get their Christmas leave. I mean the general manager runs staff and then the general manager should have the discretion to say it was a state of emergency, stay away, okay for the week, leave that pay if you want to do that. I don't know. Is that yeah. is that reasonable? Like it's mentally they're all fair questions. <laughs> yeah. well, I'd, I'd like to see a case by case situation and I hope the general managers that we employ have got the common sense to apply the right yeah. policy, but there's no, this rules that out, so leave that pay will not be entertained. Can we 
maybe reword and say maybe entertain at the discretion of the general manager. Mm -hmm. like that. And I think that's a reasonable proposition. Because annual leave is for R and R, not the final prize. Three, Mr. Mayor, you can take two days to get to somewhere. Oh, absolutely, two days is absolutely nothing. So it just seems that we're not sure when two days. No, I'm very much interested. I don't guess what you're saying is if they're taking leave without pay, they're not being paid. So the replacement is effectively <laughs> getting the money that they would have been paid. So yeah. in the budget, it's a sense, it's a so they're going to have to make that person fight in a fight decide to not go because they get in their pay. Like, but that's a, that's a decision they made. If they know the policy and they know the rules around their organisation, they can make those calls themselves whether they belong to that <coughs> organisation or not, or whether they go and fight or not. Yeah. So I think the general manager is just you know, we're not there, maybe we just get that. So just from under the policy of the second paragraph, leave beyond this period may be taken from the employees of other leave entitlements. Leave without pay may be granted by the general manager. Yep. Yep. Are you better okay with that? Yeah, well, but it, I don't have a problem as long as the you know, person has a clear understanding that one, it's a declared emergency, and two, that you know, if they're going away for three months, which some employees did on ours, but over the Christmas period where they went to work for us for three months, um, you know, that council is not going to keep topping it up, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's the main thing that I think it's really valuable. They go, but I think mean, there's a community perspective that. If you pay for them, they want to be in the community as well. Okay, so it's my was a movement in the second day. They have to with um, Councillor Urban and then Councillor Surgery. Councillor Urban, Councillor Surgery, are you happy with that slight amendment to the policy? Thanks, Councillor Bill. I think it's good that it's in the Wednesday, just both parties have been perspective. Yes. Any further comments, discussions on the, um, the policy regarding leave for civil emergencies? That being the case, we'll put that. All those in favour? Against, carried. Moving on to item three, the staff relocation assistance policy. Asking someone to move that. Or is someone happy to suspend standing orders and the discussion? Is that where that one? Sorry, I'm oh, sorry, someone happened to move it? Oh, I'll move it. You move it, move it as it stands. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Second, Councillor Williamson. Councillor Carter. Have we not uh, assisted us formalising the policy? Have we not helped with uh, assistance to senior staff coming in? This is where it is formalised in the policy and it's typing it up in the sense that. Um, you must actually move something to get the money. Um, and it comes back to again, some staff can take advantages if the policy is too open. But if you say you can receive a maximum of $5,000 to relocate, you may not. And I've had this situation where a staff member claimed the money and moved into a furnished flat. So I think that again, that's taking advantage of the community. It's really just to tighten it up, but to make sure something is being relocated, the council writes the order and the staff member runs a debt to pay that back and it sets some time frames in there that if you stay here for five minutes, you actually owe the money back to council if you stay longer term, then that debt reduces gradually <laughs> over that period. Just a, I have one question on point um, four. No payments will be made for a worker to move to an address outside of Warren Shire. Blah blah blah. Um, we discussed at a council meeting in the past. Uh, it was a rather visionary point of view by the general manager that at some time in the future we may need to uh, employ someone who, for example, lives in a centre like Dubbo that works for this council engineer that is an occasional 
office worker, but lives in a larger centre, and that's how we would attract that quality person. This doesn't work for that particular situation. So we do have the power to review this on a needs basis. I just want to point out to the rest of the council that if that was the case and we needed the following person who we couldn't necessarily attract to live in Warren, but we could attract to live in Dubbo um, and could work electronically and either use an engineer or a project manager as an example of that, uh, this policy doesn't work for them. Yes, Mayor, then the person appointing them would come back to council and ask for a variation of the policy. Again, you're offering community money for someone to spend their income somewhere else. Now, since our discussion, Mr. Mayor, the world changed and everyone's working from home these days and it's, you know, all over the country. So yes, it can work, but you can have someone work in Dubbo, work for us here that live in Dubbo and do it quite easily these days. Um, but, you know, my thoughts are that if you come and live in Warren, we'll provide you support. If you wish to live in Dubbo or Parks or somewhere else, then you know maybe the community should not be paying that cost <coughs> for relocation. Yeah. And I think it's reasonable to treat, treat that in case by case. <laughs> if it's a high powered person, we really need someone who has specific skills, then we, we have to have the flexibility to decide on how we attract that person, whether it's salary based or it's other um, other incentives. Thank you, Councillor. Any further comments, questions before we can the policy of regarding um, staff relocation assistance? <coughs> Nothing further. All those in favour? Against carried. Moving on to the report to the general manager. First of those when the outstanding reports checklist. So want to move from that. Councillor Taylor, second. Councillor Bruce, Councillor Taylor. Just the Warren Museum Gallery, I was wondering if the general manager and the mayor had a chance uh, to have a discussion with Dr. Burke. Obviously, we um, turned them back on that. Kind of yeah, yeah. Um, I've only had informal discussions, I'll let the general manager take up. After I've had <coughs> Dr. Burke is very adamant regarding the, the building, be the building that's been um, indicated in Dubbo Street. Um, there was a view that maybe they should look a bit more widely and have provision for much bigger equipment, you know, steam engines, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on, on an alternate um, land plot. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case at all. It's very um, quite focused on that building and, and proceeding along those lines. Um, I think Dr. Burke is getting up pretty much to the stage of having the development application all really tightened up. But I'll refer to the general manager. He's had ongoing discussions with Dr. Burke um, regarding this um, the museum and government. Mr. Mayor, I meet regularly with Dr. Burke and we discuss what's going on. Um, his application with the federal government is progressing really well. We're nearly to the stage where they can sign the agreement. There is no intention to move from the current site, and we've been working through the costs of how to put this building back together structurally because there's some issues there. So he's got all these necessary approvals at this stage to move forward. Um, but yeah, our, our offer to um, look at the finance for them has been rejected by the federal government. It's either council signs the deed or the museum group, and the museum group wish to sign the deed. So they're progressing with all the financial arrangements there. Um, but every everything seems on track, but it's going to be a massive undertaking, and I'm sure council assistance or staff assistance will be required through the process. Any further comments, questions regarding the first item of the general manager report, the outstanding reports checklist? Councillor Walker. Mr. Mayor, I was just going to ask um, about the 
I hope it's my first one. But Mount Foster Quarry, major impact <coughs> on the Any follow up on that? And all the lights on hold? Due to the EPA. Is it still the end? I'll, I'll defer to the general manager, uh, the engineering <coughs> services for a comment on the Mount Foster Quarry and, and where we're up to in terms of progressing in any any way, shape, or form. There, there was a planning fellow coming to speak. And oh, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the quarry initially will go to the next plan committee. It is under the plan committee arrangement, uh, making a recommendation there which way to go. Um, the we can crush work work with the twelve thousand metres that's on site for that survey and work from there. Uh, but to crush any more, we're going to have to do a, a full development application, which will involve a um, have a review of what we've got What's that one? EIS. 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 Thank you. Uh, it will involve an EIS environmental impact statement, um, and because it's in the catchment of the Macquarie Marshes. There will be some effect on that have that completed by an outside source. Um, that's what basically what I was saying to me, um, and which will you know, be a drawn out process. Um, it's not not quite but there's some tricky areas in it. Um, work along those lines. So it's not, a, not a, an RAF definitely won't review of environmental effects, but won't, won't solve it. It has to be a full impact study. So it would be you know, a few dollars, but it's a return on it. So. Thank you. Okay. With, thank you. Thank you. There's no less important features of the Mount Foster Quarry. Mars have taken over very few. They have a little bit of 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 this is never been a DA submitted. Um, back in the sixties or fifties and sixties when this project started, there would have been no no requirement in terms of putting the government at the tax but really on this day and age. Any further comments, questions regarding the um, action? Yes, yeah, the one we so Um, we discussed earlier in the meeting where we're going to pursue, uh, pursue uh, expressions of interest to, to get some idea of the cost so we can move forward. Thank you. Earlier in the meeting, we passed a resolution about uh, applying the sea, and it's just in relation to the public water that is to go into Dubbo Street. That the seal was placed on the minimum plans and they were sent in by the surveyor and they'll be registered. It will take about six weeks to come back and but we do have approval to start work on that site. So you might start to see little bits occurring there, but I just want to note that that first item put them off the list as well. This is now up to the Greenlands or whoever owns Brownlands to register the minimum and get us back to the birds. Mm -hmm. Just on that to Mr. Mayor, the security fence there now lifting just moving backwards to the new boundary. Uh, 
just remember that the toilet block itself will face the ground. So it's about five metres wide, and I believe it's a metre wide, and the agreement with the landowner is for the uh, gate in there, so the gate at the same height as the current fence will go in. So that backyard will be secure from Dumbo Street, and there's some other subdivisions that will be, I believe, future fencing. What is there during construction? Um, like back block to be secure to stop people getting through there? Ah, uh, just a minute. The toilet block itself will be craned into place so the fence will stay exactly where it is. <coughs> and we've got to build a brick wall next to the butchers for fire protection initially. The building will be craned into place so the fence will only be down at the time they crane in, and from then on, you know, the building itself will be there. Yep. We've just got to put that gate in mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes. We're going to be outstanding reports, Chief Rist. That means we have to put that all out in favour. Against carriage. We move on to item two of the <coughs> general manager's report. <coughs> that being the committee and delegates meeting. Someone happy to move that. Councillor Derrick. Councillor Walker. Councillor Derrick. Uh, I guess three is there just um, to add the interagency meeting, the next interagency meeting, which will be on the 8th of October. Um, and I will give Jodie. Dates for future meetings, um, and also the annual conference is that no longer in Lovedale? That's the virtual conference. The, the local government New South Wales conference. We received uh, notification in the last couple of days that that would not occur in a geographic location. It would be on via Zoom or other electronic means. It will only be one half day, and that will be. Uh, 23rd of November. Um, so, how that beyond that, we know very little, unless something's happened in the last 24 hours. Um, uh, so, I guess that there'll be the opportunity for us, maybe even as a whole council, to actually see it electronically and watch that for a, for a half. It's only going to be a half day, so I, was, I, I don't quite know how. You know, it's taken the various council meetings and the cameras. It takes a day to get through all the motions mm -hmm. in, yeah. in person. So I, I guess it must be some sort of pre-electronic voting or something um, yeah. that's going to occur. But nonetheless, I think it would be quite uh, beneficial for all councillors yeah. if we can see it, um, just to see it for even for an hour or two and understand how it how it actually occurs. It's a rapid fire and 50 odd motions usually. Bang, bang, bang. Um, the other part of this, we have just to bring up that we have submitted um, electronically our motion regarding the disparity between um, uh, between the response to COVID 19 and drought. Um, Councillor Walker, looking at me. Oh, Mr. Mayor, have you, you've already submitted it? Yes. There's no way of reflecting it out. <laughs> I, I thought I was given time to come and see you and discuss it with you. Anyway, if it's done, it's done. Uh, it's done. It's really done. She hasn't put the button. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, you can. Oh, I'm going to catch up with you. Oh, I'm going to catch up with you. Jane, I spent some time. Into a fishing boat. No, we, we still have to be with you. I thought it would be a real time with this. But it, just, just so that Justin knows, we, we had a recommendation at last. Council meeting that we proceed and and submit it. So if you've got if you've got some input, Council Walker. Fine. So I'll make an appointment to see you at a later date, or should have been with the GM. Uh, uh, with, uh, with, with the mayor and Jenny. Yeah. Okay. Before me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to log in and and do that. So anyway. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's right. But it will be for council information. It will be along the lines we discussed at our council meeting. Just and we just alluded to then the disparity between the response. Thank you. Go behind it. Yeah, Councillor Walker, reprieve. Glad you brought that. 
Thank you. So, uh, now, uh, any further comments, questions regarding the item two of the general manager's report around the committee and delegates uh, meetings or coming meetings? Sounds good, yes. So, um, just wondering whether it's appropriate to add the Murray Darling Association conference, or whether that's relevant. Um, but I thought that was very much a, a, a well represented conference and have pretty much everyone speaking, and um, that it does cost the council to attend. So, um, yeah. We might not be doing that, but um, I don't know whether it's appropriate to just refer to it that that's. No, the note that it's on, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Any further comments, questions regarding the committee delegates meetings? That being the case, put that all in favour against Carriage. Mm -hmm. With item three of the general manager's report, that being the draft memorandum mm -hmm. of agreement to be done with the windows on the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, we workshopped this. Um, my reservation still remains who will be signing the agreement with on um, this matter. Um, Councillor, I guess we probably need a member of this. Look, I'd be happy to suspend standing orders for a minute and then have a discussion and then go from, go from there. Is someone happy to move that way? Councillor Williamson, second. Councillor Walker. Um, Councillor Walker, you have a comment? I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just thought at the workshop, it, it, it's, and I could get this, uh, maybe I read it wrong, when we sort of decided because of that issue to hold this off for a bit that it wouldn't continue until that matter was was finalised or we needed Yeah. Well, my, belief, my belief is we needed to get the agreement sorted, but we just didn't know who we were going to sign it with. You know, mm. that, that is my mm, well, take from the workshop. Is it possible to, I thought if you could continue with the, with what you do with the financials and, and that sort of thing, but until we know who that, who's going to sign it, does it have to be signed? Can it, things continue without it being signed? Probably. Yeah, uh, <coughs> the, the current agreement has ended, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're honoring some of the things as you know, we're the landowners, so some of the maintenance things we still have obligations towards. Um, it may, you know, and I suppose we're a little bit subject to some items we get involved in accidentally, I think, um, as to what's happening between different parties. It may be worth, you know, just deferring the whole item to say, November mm. or December, December meeting, because you don't have a November meeting, to the December meeting and allow some internal processes in River Smart and other organisations to take place. You know, I, I don't think it's going to affect anything that's happening there now. The Wow Centre will still operate, you know, <coughs> people will still go there, and you know, all that will continue to work. Um, the only thing is, is probably a little bit of funding that goes into maintenance and so on that might be delayed for a couple of months, but you know, they've just spent a million dollars there, so there's not really a lot to maintain. So it might just be worth holding off this year until River Smart comes back to council and makes some changes in their organisational structure. This issue has been, I've approached Shona, who's now in the of it, to, to, to um, give her what's happening. And that particular issue that the general manager is talking about, she realises that she's, she's, she knows that things have to happen. I mean, she's been put in a difficult position, but she realises and, she, and, and they will work towards some sort of finalisation. The committee, when we meet, would like to to have the same thing happen, have some clarity on what River Smart, where the direction is, and that the, it might end up that they disband or they just take another direction and 
and there will be another, another organisation is established to be separate from the smart. So I tend to agree with the general manager that maybe just a bit of time to work this all out. Sure. So on the other hand, though, um, we, we, we're making some assumptions about what's going to happen to River Smart and that organisation over in the Loud Centre. But currently, am I wrong in saying River Smart as an organisation still exists today? So there's no harm in, in my mind, in establishing this um, with River Smart. We're set, trying to say, guess what's going to happen in the future. Uh, for them as an organisation, they'd like to know that there's continuance of sort of maintenance and, and these sorts of things. So we either have to, we either should sign this with Group Smart and allow that organisation to do whatever it's going to do and, and change internally if it has to. Then it's up to them to come back to us and, and redo this with the new organisation. Or we send them a letter saying that uh, under the current circumstances, the the conditions in the previous MOU are extant and we will continue to support you as per the previous uh, MOU, MOA, um, until such time as there's changes that, um, you know, you know I mean? so one or the other. So if we, if we don't go ahead with this, I don't see a problem going ahead with this necessarily um, because we're trying to second guess what they're going to do. Well, I, I have a problem with an organisation that doesn't have a CEO. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's a reasonable way but, we, but, but we're not mowing CEO's lawn, we're mowing their lawn. You know, and that maintenance is about that organisation. And we understand that there are, uh, there's an upheaval going on, but for the continuance of support, we either let them know that the previous one is still happening, or we do something, but to gap it all together, and they don't know what's going on, that doesn't help anyone. It's an issue also with the lease. I mean, the lease at the moment is with River Smart. I mean, from council the, the, that owns the, the land, um, that has to all be um, looked into and changed. Yeah, there's, the there's, 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 there's no issues with the lease because, mm -hmm. you know, the lease is doing what's required. And mm -hmm. as Councillor Brewer points out, most of it is under the previous MOA. So, you know, that continuance has existed. So it's, it's out of date, but we're both honouring where we are. Um, to introduce some new things, I, I think it's probably a little bit early because if River Smart head back the lease and another organisation takes it on, they may have some different points to what River Smart put forward. Um, you know, and, and I think a community organisation will probably look at things totally different to how River Smart presented them to us. Uh, so I think, yes, we, we could defer this and continue on the same path. Um, and that might just be logical, but, you know, at this stage, yeah, there, there's going to be some change in River Smart, but we don't know sort of. Well, the full extent is, you know, but you could approve this and then automatically transfer it to a new organisation. But I would think the new organisation might have some different goals in place. Can I also bring up that this MLA is for five years if you sign? You know, so it's it, it doesn't bind us to a lot of a whole lot of things that we don't already intend to do. The driveway widening and that, you know, the driveway upgrade itself is going to happen because of the new sewage works and. So it doesn't stop a lot of those things happening by not um, signing up to this. I just like that organisation to understand that we are still supporting them. But not, so that whoever forms the, the, that business can understand what their relationship with council currently is and maybe, maybe tell them that we intend to you know, acknowledge this or the request for this, but say we intend to widen the driveway, we intend to do these other things and continue on as we were. Well, it's a letter of appropriate in this case. Right. Yeah, well, I think so. If, we, if, if the decision is to defer this, then I think we should write for them and tell them that the, we, under the previous MOA, if there's a continuance of the you know, mowing and the support and these sorts of things. So don't, don't sort of swear that it's not going to happen. Councillor Williamson. Yeah, 
I agree with the mayor. I agree with you too, actually. I mean, can we be just extending the current agreement, the recommendation to extend the current agreement now for another three months? And we'll review the uh, new agreement when we have the new organisation or whether the wording is properly to get it going forward. I, I just think given the three months window, we can come back to this in three months time. That widening is not going to happen in the next three months anyhow. So just to extend what we've got now currently till they get all their um, dots and crosses all lined up. Yeah, the I think that's the answer to what I'm Sorry. You have to do red state standing orders and council meetings and you have to move that way. Okay. So we um, Mrs. Fenton sent orders to Councillor Williamson and Walker. We have to have the red state standing orders. Have your range next thing. Councillor Walker, we'll put back all those in favour. Against, carried. Councillor Williamson has a motion. The general manager will kindly read out to you. Um, is that, is that, <laughs> they say they're coming to see that. We're going to write a letter to River Smart extending the current handmaid away and that we'll undertake that whatever we do with you. Yep. In December. December. In December. It was a stream. Mm -hmm. Give it time frame on it. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Walker, are you happy to second that? Yes. 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 Thank you. Any further, Councillor Williamson? No, no, thank you. I think no discussions made, mate. Thank you. thank you. Any further comments, questions before we put that? <laughs> All those in favour? Against? Carried? Moving on to item four of the reports of the general manager. That is the drafting round of the with the Warren Youth Foundation. So I'm happy to move that. Again, we workshop this um, it was a couple of weeks ago. Councillor Irving, you happy to move that? Yeah. Yep. Second. Councillor Brewer, Councillor Irving. I think what is a good thing about um, the MRE is, is that we, we will get the Warren Youth Foundation to come and speak to us at a council meeting, give us updates, and, um, and it does assist a group that obviously has the community's best interests at heart. Um, yeah, by that and the use of facilities, um, yeah, 12, like for 12 months of the year. Um, yeah, I think that's going to really help them, yeah, support them practically. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that and I did. Any further comments, questions? Um, we go to the amendment agreement with the Warren Sporting, uh, sorry, the Warren Youth Foundation. Nothing further. That's been the case to put that. All those in favour? Against? Carried? Okay, moving on to. Item five of the report to the manager regarding the Warren Airport water um, and land access agreement. Someone happy to move that recommendation? Or do we need to? Oh, are we happy, happy to move it? Yep, yeah, Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams, sorry. Can we move that? Oh, yeah. Councillor yeah. Walker. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Councillor yeah. Walker. Yep, yeah. yeah. Councillor Walker. Well, we're happy to move the recommendation. It seems to be um, given the other side. Slide of the yeah. equation. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the good of the landowners to allow that. Any questions? We're yeah. still paying for water usage, so Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's the access charge that has been yeah. waived, and then <coughs> whatever water is used is, is paid for. I think that's it. And I, that was what, what was agreed to, is my understanding. Yeah, and so I was just formalising that. And I think that's agreed to. And um, when, you, when you look at the spiders, uh, Councillor Walker's point out to it, I think it's, well, I think it's <coughs> valuable for Council, but it's valuable for those land that hold us to have access to that. that and, um, yeah, I think it's a good project completed on time, on, on budget, and 
They kind of ask for clarification. So there's, so there's four lots mentioned in the recommendation. Um, and so the cost, um, 1,359, so that's three lots of 453. So that's, that's correct. correct, yes. It's so it's only per, um, per land oh. lot, not per lot. That's, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor, the reason a lot of numbers are listed there is so that in the future, no one else can claim across this lot, or if the lot changes because they subdivide and sell it, it only relates to the lot and at a time, you know, those sorts of things. No, it's, it's, it'd be similar, well, I was saying, it'd be similar to a, a, a like the rural residential with that would be many I think I feel more I guess well I'll, I'll stand very much correct with that. Well, the general manager of the main finance administration. Three years the the property three years in Warren Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the your residential, your business or your residential yeah. down, it's all, all the same access fee. Yeah, thank you. Any further comments, questions before we put on the board? I think the case we put on the fire regarding the water at the Warren Airport um, water main access agreement. All those in favour against the carriage. Morning, two. Uh, before we get to the numbers, can we back? Okay, let's adjourn the morning. <laughs> We're moving on to the report to the Division of Management Finance Administration. Um, the first of those being the reconciliation. First being the reconciliation certificate. Okay. <coughs> someone to move the reconciliation certificate for July. Councillor Serby, second. Councillor Serby, Councillor Serby. Well, just the recommendation. It's just sad to look at the interest rates, though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, they are submitting at interest rates, aren't they? Any further comments, questions regarding reconciliation certificate for July? I don't mind with the main compliance administration report. Then no further comments, questions, put that all those in favour. Against Gary, moving on to item two. This is the finance administration report regarding the statement of rates and annual charges. Someone had to remove that. Councillor Serby, second. Councillor Bruce, Councillor Serby. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually really good to see that up to the 13th of August we're looking ahead. We're, we're nearly back to where we were in 16 when we were going to that and presented for it. So mm -hmm. that's good. It's just a pain in the last two months. Very good indeed. Any further questions, comments before we put item two? Then you can also put that all those in favour against carried. Moving on to item three, the term, internal restricted fund save. <coughs> Someone happy to move the recommendation regarding item three. Councillor Serdity. Thank you, Councillor Serdity. Second, Councillor Derek. Councillor Serdity. Uh, no, I've got no, just one query if I can, with regard to the street lighting, that, is that, um, where is that up to at the moment? <coughs> you know, the way you were talking about the, the LED lights or whatever they were, I think that's a um, funny thing that's gone through. Is that only moved anywhere or? I just want to say, Mr. Mayor, um, I am seeing some LED lights start to appear around town, they're on the replacement program, but yeah. there hasn't been a wholesale replacement yeah. started yet. <coughs> Thank you. Just looking at my printed copy here, just to see what's the same as. Um, everyone, just, just someone bring me up to speed here. On the purpose of the internal restricted funds, I've got something to do my printed copy is saying to do with the Warren Museum and Gallery Association. Is anyone mm. 
If you go there, you can also go there. Yeah, it's oh. yeah. So it's to me, yes, it's a mistake. I did mention it to the treasurer to pass that on to the government. I think we need all the food. Yeah, where's his purpose? Yeah. I think we just need to go with that. Yeah. Paragraph with that six-wall removal, which is council's medical. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Can I just ask what page you're on? Uh, page 11. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. And then just a fraction further down, 72,700 employee out of the airport. Is that one you like to? That run that <laughs> was many years ago. Um, we, the council had a, um, in the, in the retirement scheme for the super, had a whole super, super innovation holiday. Yes. So what we were doing was that the money that we would have paid for the retirement scheme super, we put into reserve because we knew that that wasn't going to continue. And that's been eaten up the last five years, over the last five years, that's been eaten up because of the, the global financial crisis. For some reason, the retirement scheme is the one that got hit with all the, all the expenses. So councils actually paid additional over and above what the normal what the normal superannuation uh, contributions are for the retirement members. Now we only have three retirement scheme members in our in our system at the moment, on which one I'm one of them. So, <laughs> um, so but we're actually so what our well, our retirement for employees might be around about eight thousand dollars a month, but we're paying something like fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars a month. But we have to pay that additional contribution. So what we were doing was dragging that out over the years. Now it's, it's gone, so we had to come out of operations. So, so that was the reason behind that. We only did it It was also there in case we had issues with my street went through the roof or you know, um, things like that. So it was, we, we sort of put it in many years ago to just in case that sort of stuff happened. Well, now we have it. But it is dropping out. Our um, additional contributions now dropped out about $46,000. Due to drop down next year, probably down to about 40, and they're hoping that then that'll be, that'll be finished. But with the COVID um, and interest rates and, and things like that, who knows? I think it's here, let's go and charge. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, deal with it if it happens. Any further comments, questions on item three regarding the internal internal restricted funds? That being the case, put that all those in favour against. Carried. Moving on to item four, the financial reports for the year ended 30th of June 2020. Someone happy to move the recommendation there. Yeah. Councillor Dress, second. Councillor Sergi, Councillor Dress. No, just happy to do that recommendation, thanks. Just an update, when do we expect the auditors to be around? Um, three years to manage the the auditors have started audit, they're not coming out due to COVID. Uh, so, thanks for the people who are here, they're hitting the bombarding with emails and wanting to get the information. So, it's going to be interesting over the next week, I suppose. That, um, yeah, due to COVID, they're, they're, they're all working from their own homes in Sydney. So, um, the audit started on Monday, so they're, they're working from work from home. So, I wouldn't expect that to be the Real result for a few weeks because they're sort of untaking everything externally, but internally from the own homes. Yes. Yeah. The councils and they've, they've got, I think I've already been looking at a Sydney council at the moment and they're doing both and, and us at the moment as well. So, um, yeah, they may be a, a sign of time. things to come. We'll see how it all bends out towards the end of the uh, April. And, uh, but, um, yeah, they did, did commence on Monday and uh, yeah. <laughs> Bombard with emails now wanting to give you a look at what it is. Thank you. Anything else on item four? Put <coughs> that then all as a favour of item four against carry. Uh, <coughs> item five, which is the librarian's report. I'll skip the page. Someone happy to group the recommend the recommendation. Yeah, happy to, to Councillor Certity. Second <coughs> Councillor Early, Councillor Certity. Uh, yeah, it's a, a good report from um, Pam. The one thing that I just want to clarify a little bit is there were some concerns raised by some people in the community about the fact that it's not open to the public on a Monday. But what they've been doing is because they can't have all the events for the to come to the library and do all of that. They've actually been doing it the other way. So once a month we go to um, say Mary's school, um, possums and the um, 
Seven, the preschool. Um, they, they, the central's not quite in there yet, but they're actually using that time to get all of the resources ready. They bring all the gear with them. They do all the events and activities, preschools and the other venues. Um, the next thing that they're working on at the moment is um, um, starting off like a, what they call a pop-up library where the kids will become, in those venues, will become members of the library, which increases their numbers, which is good. But every five years we do a color of the resources that we have in the library. And not all of those have to be you know, gotten rid of because they're still quite good. So what we can do is put them aside to be able to use those as the books that go out to the, the kids to borrow. So if they go missing or whatever, it's not any of their resources. That's working really well. Um, we're still doing the, the house balances to that come to the library. We're still getting more of the people online doing the only thing they're doing is sort of restricted to is, is to have those events in the library where they just need more um they have the room to be able to do the thing yet. But apart from that it's going really well. They um they they managed to get um, one of the builders at uh, the community builders grants for five thousand dollars which they've been using to buy all those resources and what have you so um, people in the community are still getting all of the support that they would have gotten just in a different way. So, and it's working really well. Mm -hmm. Doing a great job. Yeah, doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor. Any further questions, comments before we move on? Any further questions, comments before we move on? Any further 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 comments before we move on? The reports of the Division of Manager Finance Administration this regards the sale of the land at Nevertire for the construction of a uh, potential tower there. Um, I might defer to the. Well, uh, okay, we're we'll probably going to move for a second and then I'll ask for some comments. I, you, 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 you're happy to move it. So, <laughs> Just for some information, um, bring us up to speed about the general manager of Major Finance Administration, seems to be the chief protagonist in this one. It's both that. This mayor is pretty self explanatory. Um, Optus and um, Fertile Solutions wish to build a tower at Navatire. And we own a piece of land that's close enough to a power line and far enough away from houses that you know, is suitable. Um, and they've approached us, you know, whether we would sell a piece that's 30 metres by 30 metres approximately. And this is the most suitable land we could find to meet all their requirements and make sure we have some sort of telecommunications in the Nambatar area. So, yeah, it, it's really what the point says. I can't tell you much more than that. that. You know, um, probably, probably the land costs, you know, it'd be nice if it was a million dollars, but um, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> probably closer to three hundred than a million. <laughs> so, yes. uh, three, I'm just asking a question. Given that we now have this possibility of this looks like this pair is going to go ahead. Is there a chance that we can maybe get on the back of the couch and say, look, it's there, what can we do to talk to the other people and, and get in? Because a lot of people in, in the area are on the couch. So, you know, if you do my daughter meeting, go to the machine and see the when she comes out, she's sitting on the reception because she's not. So that can fix her, but she's going out and see the area anymore. So. Um, yeah, I, I suppose the comment to that is that they're two separate business entities. Um, they both compete for government funding, for communications, towers, how the government works it out is up to the government. Um, you can these days, I believe, buy a phone that has dual chips, so you can pick up off the same Telstra and that's probably the best advice because it's like any service provider you know you sign up with one yeah. you only get the service yeah. they provide where they are and we can write to telstra um but i don't think it's going to do one ounce of good because the telstra tower further up towards number million will not allow optus on it 
you know, not just you're not allowed Telstra on their towers because they're a competitor. It seems a waste of structure. They both could have the same equipment. And yeah. So, so given that, is there an opportunity for maybe to to send the letter to Telstra to find out if it's possible to up the amperage, whatever it is, how the wording is, I'm not sure. I'm the one that's ever thinking that will cover the wider area. Where's well, us, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. We don't ask for that. to the recommendation. <laughs> Did you like to cancel the service? Yeah. 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 So, you were you adding that we provide you to do job better for us. Yeah. 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 Councillor Dirce, you're happy with that? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. Just negotiating over that. Yes, no, it's too difficult. We'll see if they can resolve. Do you have both? I'm very happy to see. I'm holding no expectation. Yeah, there's it's conflicting signals because we, as politicians, are supposedly arguing our case that we've got bad, <coughs> bad communications out here. <coughs> now they're allowing two major communications to play off against each other, and it's going to be at our, mm -hmm. at our peril to, to a degree. But the <coughs> okay. manager says there's, your phone may have multiple chips, but, you know, well, I'll be leaving when I see it. Mm -hmm. it could cost all we yeah. could cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Two questions, please. Um, why, why are we selling, not leasing? Um, what advantage do we have over selling it, having someone else own mm -hmm. The fish with the shire, wouldn't it? Does it not make any more sense? I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but the minimum rate for that kind of land will be far in excess of what I believe. I believe. There, well, someone told me before that it's $200, $1,000 for making 200 bucks a month, so you know, one person connects to that tower, they pay for the land. So I just think that their, their ability to make money out of it far exceeds. What we're gonna make two thousand dollars, and that's about it. Uh, why didn't we? And was rates. it an option to listen? And rates? Yeah. Well, well, well I don't know. Was it an option? Well, the day, the day asked us to buy, we said, well, well, yeah, sure, we'll put it to council. Well, I have always asked why wouldn't we lease it? I mean, it's they can make a fortune out. They can very easily lease it. They 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 can buy a lot of this. It's just that going into leasing every five years or so is we've got to renew it a lot, and and then we're going to get the money for it. Well, that does power out. If we power that, we we the power of that. Show it would be it would be rateable. We just send the rates out. That's what I thought. Well, that's why I thought that selling would be it's up to council. That's why I thought we probably do the sale on the list. Uh, the other question is, do we have to stay in here or is there an agreement from the new owner to keep it mown and tidy and all the rest of that? Because these things so unless there's a, an issue with it, they're never going to attend. So it's going to be a fenced off tower with four foot high grass in it all the time. What, what onus can we put on the new owners to ensure that it's maintained? Any? Mr. Mayor, if you sell the land it's up to the owner, and then there's provisions under the Act to keep things clean. So we treat them so as we would any other landowner. Mm -hmm. no? um, yeah, I must admit, we probably don't have to mow our land, but it's better now. Yeah, it's well, yeah, it's a different matter though. I'm, that's besides the point. I'm, I'm just bringing to my mind what I understand that the lease payments are for the Optus Tower just out of Warren near the Orange um, I don't know who, on, on that piece of land anyway. 
things. And I think it is really pretty good money. Um, way, way, way in excess of um, what the land we proposed in this law would be. This feels like rubbing their hands together going, well, $2,000, you won't be in the first five minutes. I'll, I'll stand pretty much corrected, but when that copy was sold a few years ago, I think part of the worst payment for that, having that office tower there, was between 10 and 15 grand a year. Yeah. And that was part of the attraction for the person who bought it to know that that income was. So I pose the same question: Why are we preparing to offer to lease it? Why are we just? Well, that's what I get. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the numbers are. You might know that you've made me think about it significantly different. I this is this is only a recommendation. This is the on the so we can choose to do the lease rather than the well, we can we negotiate us as early. Yes, we have. Um, <laughs> It's council's decision, Mr. Mayor. Well, I mean, my position is that we're put here to do the best thing for the Shire, and I think it's a very clear <coughs> case of leasing it would be the best thing for the ratepayer. It's not the one off sale, two thousand one hundred forty dollars. Yeah, five minutes time. As soon as they connect it up, they'll rate that much in. So to them, that'd be that. You know, you know, I'm certain enough. So, uh, I'm pursuing, I'm pursuing that in that you know, because I know you can find out. Well, would you prefer to defer this? Do we have to get on pressure for this? I don't. No. That's it. So, Mr. Mayor, can I Are we happy then to just defer this to more information? Well, well no, I think we have to in, uh, allow the Major Finance Administration to go to practice build solutions. I suppose, with, with, yeah, to get some sort of indication of where they would sit. In the recommendation, can the public have the authority to be given to the manager of whoever to negotiate the lease at sale or with the vendor and then report that to council? Yeah, without previous context of how the whole thing was brought up, we um, just said, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, to give you the background, phone call come. We've received a grant from the federal government to build a tower in Nevertire. We've identified a piece of land next to the gate of the sports oval. We're going to the Crown to see if they'll transfer it into our name. And the discussion was, well, it's probably not the best location. We might have a better one near a power source for you and further away from houses, which is our this land came about and then an email come in, well, will you sell us the land? Yeah. Obviously they would like to buy it out, right? They have control then. So yeah, that's the whole story. Yeah. And then could be on the downside, something happens to fuel solutions slash optus. That's it. It's out of it's in their control still, whereas if it's leased land, then at least the council has some sort of Control to an extent. I think it's worth. The actual is, I believe it's worth investigating mm -hmm. at the very least, and then we we then be clear about what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. I think we just yeah, I think we just I think we defer this decision. <coughs> If that's okay, the mover and second it, defer this decision yep. until, <coughs> until more information is provided. Is that, is that reasonable? Yeah. I just have one question. If going with the general manager said that um, like we go back and say lease, <coughs> change them all, we lease it. 
Thank you, Senator Bob. If we don't, they've got to leave. We'll go back and negotiate that crown. But will leave. We lose out altogether. I understand that. Yes, I think we like thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a conversation. Yeah. It's a conversation. I think you can have in, in negotiation as opposed to. Yeah, they, they might say that. Just mm. Yeah, let's let's just let's explore the possibility of, on you know given the commerciality mm. what was done here in Warren. I yeah, I think we at least need to know. Yeah, they can they can say no. Go away. That's that's their commercial decision. Yeah. Because he doesn't ask. It doesn't to us. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so <coughs> uh, item six then has been deferred. So you council said you council drew some meeting that item six be deferred for the information you get back to the council. Yeah. You happy about council groups? Don't yes. seem that excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was good. Why is it stopped? Rome wasn't good. Right, it's fine. Thank you. So, in the case, no, we'll, we'll, we'll defer that. Any further discussion before we put that? Put that then. All those in favour? Against? Carry. <coughs> Moving on to <laughs> support to the manager of health and development. The first of those being item one, a request to revoke the Minister's Health Declaration. I'm just wondering how you might want to deal with this. Used to now from Mr. White to be available to answer any questions in the council. Council agrees. So, you have to wait for you need a motion first before that occurs. And that will be the secondary one. Suggesting, or do we do we do we need to send any orders, or do we how how is the best way to go? Yeah, the council wishes to discuss it. You probably can suspend standing orders now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. how do we do that? Yeah, council groups, council groups have moved to suspend standing orders. <coughs> Anyone speaking against that? Can I, I just want to not necessarily against it, but. If we ask Mr. White to come and speak to the facts, surely they need to be in the recording for the general public to understand a little bit more about why we made that decision in the first place. So can we get can we have the presentation first with the facts and then suspend standing orders, have the discussion and then we go back into council to make the call. Is that sensible? Yes, suspend standing orders so that we can have an open discussion. <coughs> yes, we still record. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we don't stop, so we mm. don't say anything untowards. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So, we're moving to suspend standing orders. Any further discussion required to put in that? All those in favour? Against? Carry. <coughs> so, suspend standing orders. I think it's appropriate that, well, how are we going to deal with this particularly? The, the information is there in front of us. Just ask Mr. White. A summary. A summary. Yeah. summary. Yeah. <coughs> What's going on? And then the councillors can ask questions. Yep. 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 So, thank you, Mr. White. Thank you. Um, first, I'd just like to say the reason we're here, and I'm not going to like talk all over this. Uh, 1998, if anyone else had, there was two orders I could do. Used to go on water, which is pretty much a dog out of the street, repeatedly. Dangerous dog water, dog attacks, bites, whatever. Um, they can take us to the local court, put them in front of the judge, we vote it that way. 2013, menacing dog water came about. With the menacing dog water, they can't take us to the local court. It comes to council. We are up 12 months, they get to put up the council if they want to be voted. Then it, um, we do what we're doing here, it's up to you once you can revoke it. The difference between menacing dog and dangerous dog, everything's the same, apart from the cage, so we're building a 6,000 dog cage, which is a cage at 18 and I'll cut it into. So that's where um, the difference in that is. And also they can't appeal the local court for a judge to overrule it. So we've got about five menacing dogs in Warren Shire at the moment. This is the first one that we've seen after the 12 months and asked to have a look at it see if we can revoke it. So, um, legal advice I got was to bring it to the council, 
but thanks for coming you guys and see what you see. So can we just get an understanding, John, of what what incident occurred to lead you to make this amazing dog? And then we might just understand exactly the, the context in which that's all happening. Yep, yep, yep. So um, back in June, there's two dogs. I've got a phone call about two dogs out chasing the sheep and put them into the river. Um, I've attended the property, spoke to the owner. They've said that the two, they'll join the ship across Kelpie dogs, they went up behind here. I went up here. Uh, lost, I never saw the dogs attack the sheep, but when I did come around here, it, I've come across two dogs attacking the kangaroo. <coughs> They've chased the kangaroo into the river. They were only gun dogs. Uh, they wouldn't let that kangaroo out. They kept rushing that kangaroo the whole time to the kangaroo to the ground. Um, got the dogs, found the owners of the dogs. It was two separate owners, but at the time they were living at the same address. Uh, since this has happened, they've complied, the uh, one that's written in has complied with all orders. Uh, they've done the cage, signs, D6, the dog's 12 months old now. Um, yes, the 12 months have come around, so they've decided to write in the council, which I'm nice to do. Now, one of the things they can do is get behaviour training. Some of the sessions actually training where they have to go train, like retrain, so they're not so bad. They haven't done that because I wanted to put in front of you guys it's a very costly thing to do. So I didn't want them to go to the train and then bring it up here. So that's one of the options we do have is to go and get the dogs um, trained and come back. Um, we can you, you guys can leave it how it is, everything's in place, or we can revoke it. Um, the biggest thing with the owners, what they want uh, at the moment, the dog can't left under 10, anyone under 18. <coughs> They want to be able to, the kids to take the dog for walk without a muzzle. So that's what we're looking at. So the dog at the moment will be without a muzzle in their backyard with someone over 18 for the rest. That's the reason they've asked for the, the big road. So you said that the dog to go for a walk has to have a muzzle. Has to have the muzzle and the collar on? Yeah, yep. and, and, but a child under 18 can't just take it for No, that was going to be under the you know, some of the day. Can I ask a couple of questions, um, if you don't mind? So in your report, or in the report we have in front of us, it talks about sheep being chased into the river. From what I can gather on this, you can't be sure whether those were the dogs that chased the sheep into the river. Well, I, um, I didn't see them do it. The owner just turned up and the dog was there and he saw the take off afterwards. So he actually didn't actually see them put the sheep in the river. It was five dead sheep in the river. So all I went off, so what I saw with the kangaroo, that's the reason I've declared this dog venison for attacking a native animal. And the only yeah, so we only have really the kangaroo into the river. Yes, yeah, but the, 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 where, the, where the facts are. The rest of it is kind of hearsay. Right? Great, great. Yeah. Uh, and, and the second point I have is that it says in here in section 2A of the Act, in making a determination under subsection 2A in relation to a menacing dog. Declaration the council is to have regard to the nature and extent of any behavioural training that dogs undergone. Yep. Now, given the fact that dogs hasn't had any behavioural training, yep. you kind of said that would be really quite expensive. Yep. But if if that person, I don't know, we've got the flexibility to look at any training that has been done. Yep. Behavioural training. And it doesn't say that it has to be expensive or oh, structured no, no, no. or any of that sort of thing. So. If we were in a situation where we said we, we, want, we need to be confident that the dog's not going to chase kangaroos or sheep again, I just always wonder whether we could actually do that, be happy yeah. that they're not going to chase sheep. This being the first one that actually come back after the months, I didn't want to bring it up and see what process to go through. Um, if that's, if, yeah, from then on, if he comes through, would recommend this before we come to council. But being the first one, I didn't want to come up and see you guys. Do we have any sort of resources in Warren? We, we can't recommend them. Them. No, I don't think so, but we can't, or we can't recommend any training or training to use. Really. No, no, I'm not asking that, but, but, but if there's a third, I mean, in my mind, I'd like to see the sheep walk past the dog or vice versa, the dog do nothing. Yeah, that's what yeah, the training is. Yeah. 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 So just, 
didn't actually taste the blood, did they? No, no, I don't know about the sheep. I didn't so what so I went under was the kangaroo and what they were doing to the kangaroo. So just yeah, the blood is a big difference from when they've got a bite on That's the reason <laughs> they're not declared dangerous and then that's the reason it was for the Spanish and Acts back in 2013. So if I rocked up and then attack that kangaroo and rip its throat out or something, it would be declared dangerous, I'll be able to have a call again. Yeah, um, oh, I forgot about you. <laughs> I don't have to go to there. Um, okay, so yeah, I was just thinking that if the dogs had um, <coughs> caught the kangaroo or the sheep, if, if they were sheep chasing the sheep, then they could have drawn blood, like bitten them. Yeah. But since they were in the water, they didn't go in the water. Yeah, um, what are, what are yeah, I'm concerned can't... that um, the nature of the dogs is to chase, and it could be a young child. Um, yeah, that's my concern, and I think I know it's expensive, but behaviour training sounds like we're going. And yeah, and we can just, I can only act on what I see and what's happened, and actually act on what may happen in the future. Can I please just say, I mean, we have had issues down here in Toronto Road over the years, and we say that they didn't, didn't draw blood or they didn't taste blood, and that sort of thing. We've had sheep killed in the creek by dogs and unfortunately it doesn't mean that they you know beaten them or anything you still lost sheep they're dead yeah. i mean they're not, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a nice thing to see we've seen the thing is once they do that it's all behavioral training and whatnot the first they do it once Unfortunately, they do. Yeah. And we've had it at home about four or five times the same animals. I mean, I hate this dog can still, I gather, get out and about, which is great, and the exercise, it sounds like a problem then for the next size. Um, I just, it's, got, it's, it's, you know, it's innate, it's there. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. use that behaviour, it's a tough one. And to declare the dog means more dangerous, it doesn't have to actually bite or attack, but it just has to, it has to chase, it. that's enough to declare it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and with these dogs in general, it's away from the other dog at the time I was living with. Um, it has been desexed. It was only probably 12 months old when it first happened. Um, I've had no issues with the dog since, and yeah, as I said, we've complied with everything, so that's. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done the right thing. Yeah, well, yeah, they've done. What they've done. By the time frame. <laughs> they see a sheep run past. Yeah. No, I think that's where the behaviour training comes involved in it as well. So. Can, sorry, can you explain to us the difference between menacing and nuisance dog then? And, and sorry, and the second part of that would be what I'm thinking is can we reduce the the severity of the penalty on the dog to nuisance? Is, is that an option for us to say, look, we're we're going to go back in stages on this, and it's now going to be a nuisance dog, and you just got to look after it. Is that a thing? No, not really. Nuisance dog's more of a dog just out in general, so it's completely in order and everything. So, yeah, the nuisance dog, it's like it expires after 12 months. After 12 months, it's not a nuisance dog anymore. The nuisance dog, about the only thing you've got to do is the fines go up if it's out again. They don't have to do cages or these things. Um, they've got to be my chip prevention, of course. Um, where are menacing dogs. The cages are built with signs up, they've got the danger dog sign at the front of their house. They've got to have the collar on, they've got to, so as soon as I turn up I see that collar, I know that that's a dangerous dog that's out in the street. Or, or menacing dog. Yeah, nuisance dog and menacing two totally different things. And that's the reason we brought menacing in, we're pushing for it. Because it was either one extreme or the other, it's either you know, we'll just find them or six thousand dollars worth of fines, um, cages and all the rest of it. So it's a, it's a little money, but the only problem with the menacing. I can't take it from local, they can't take us to local court and I can't put this in front of a judge, which I prefer to do. But the um, severity of the attack wasn't serious enough to go dangerous. Thank you. Mr. White, Thank you. Thank you. It's very good. Any further discussion because then <coughs> we can reinstate standing orders. Is there any further discussion? The recommendation is to um, not revoke. Yeah. Is that because of the concerns? Yeah. 
Um, I, yeah, you're right. I'm just an investigating officer, so I can't make any recommendations what's going on. That's what the legal is. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It is a black and white. We can do a vote of but we can't make it a nuisance goal and with a fine ending for it gets out. We can't do that. <coughs> Any further discussion before we move the state standing ones? Nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillors Beach and Drews, we have to read state yes. standing ones. Yes. We'll put that all as a favour against carried. So there's a recommendation in front of us there. Someone happy to move that recommendation. <coughs> Councillor Beach. Yes. Councillor Beach. Councillor Beach. Yes, no, I'm happy to I'm happy to move that. I think um, yeah, it's just a fair of uncertainty. You know, even though it hasn't taken no, there's still an effect once they once they do go. Uh, yeah. As yeah. much as I hate to say that. Yeah. I, I think it's sometimes wise to err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Given our previous experience with a dog and um, um, I think I think it's prudent to err on the side of caution at this time. Yeah. Well, that would be to sure that one of our dogs if that was to occur. On the land, it, it wouldn't be here anymore. Just continue doing it again, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Any any other discussion? Let's put it with that. I think in case put that all those in favour against Gary. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Mr. White. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Moving on to item eight, which is the notices of motion questions without committed to notice. Sorry, we have one item there, the bottle code of conduct and procedures. That motion has been proposed by Councillor Irving. I think Councillor Irving, in discussions, has some modifications to make, and then we'll still go second. Yeah, um, I'd like to propose an amendment to the recommendation. In light of the um, Office of Local Government circular that was um, released after I submitted the notice of motion, and um, I guess the details I wasn't aware of at the time of submitting my notice of motion. So, so the amendment, um, and I have had um, discussions with the general manager. Um, so the amendment to both one and, and two. Um, so one, and I'll, I have got it written out for the executive assistant if, if it goes forward. Um, so one is council hold a workshop on Wednesday, 9th of September, if happy with that specific, to review the new prescribed model code of conduct and procedures for the administration of the model code of conduct for local councils in New South Wales 2020 um, to inform its adoption at an ordinary meeting of council as soon as possible. Uh, so I pretty much just um, change it from the 2018 um, document to the 2020 and um, include the federal code of conduct as well as the procedures so that we can look at both um, in context of the new the circular. And the circular was um, placed in the Maddox minutes, if you weren't sure that circular related to. So the Office of Local Government um, um, has made this something that council has to do. Um, and so number two um, is to for council, that council make a correction to the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council on Thursday, 27th of June, 2019. Um, as per item three on page five of the policy report of the general manager model conduct A7-6 to recognize the adoption of the model code of conduct 
rather than replicating the adoption of the model code of meeting practice. Um, just there's a slight oversight when we um, confirmed those minutes that under that item of model code of conduct, it said we adopt the model code of meeting practice. So it's just kind of a correction there that's needed um, to show that we did adopt it. If anyone wants to look back, you know, that wasn't at that meeting that they can see that we adopted it um, at the time. And yeah, so, okay. yeah, so that's just, yeah. I need a second there. Councillor Walker. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll ask the councillor, I think she's going to do it right, and then Councillor Walker, you have a comment? Um, no, because it's something that we have to do, I think everyone should be fine. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mead. So, does this review, I mean, my thing is that I was calling for all this is just come out with a new update and that's, that's what you're talking about, that's yes. a, that recent update. Yes, yeah, so conduct and procedures. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to. And so, and obviously the executive assistant and the um, kindly printed out the new documents for mm -hmm. us, um, ready for the workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are also, um, on the Office of Local Governance website as PDF and I think Word documents, PDF documents, so you can access them online on the OLG's website as well. And it's recommending that we should adopt them as soon as possible. So maybe after the workshop, once we've reviewed them and seen the context for why I'm shy in council, um, we can adopt them hopefully at the September meeting. Uh, thank the general manager uh, for giving me clarity on that. Thank you. Okay. So, my clear, we've got these two, the two documents in front of us, and Councillor Irving is proposing that we have a workshop on the 9th of September, which we're going to schedule later in there to do that. So, there's the new ones. And then, the second part of the motion is to have in minutes that truly reflect what occurred at that meeting. That is, in fact, we got the model code of conduct as opposed to the model code of speaking and practice leaders. Okay, any further questions, comments? There's two things with the conduct. Is there one for procedures? If you look at it, no, there's two things. There, one, one is the code of conduct, and then then at the top of it, it's written, the next one is the procedures. The red one is the red one. The red one is the red one. The red one is the red one. So that's that's the two that we're going to cover. Yes, you could be. Okay. So that's everyone's clear about it. What we do? What that's the only information for those of you. Yep. Okay, that being the case, that's all those in favour against Gary. Uh, Members of urgency, there are none. We now will move into confidential matters and we will first off need a motion to exclude, but we do have a voice procedure. We need, first, we need a resolution to proceed to the committee of the whole and consider the matters listed on the council's report and any other matters which is separate resolution has been carried this meeting. So we need a resolution first to move into the committee of the whole. Sorry. Question first, does yeah. that thing go off in confidential? No. Second. Thank you, Councillor Derry. All those in favour? Against carried. Mr. Mayor, before you move, we just on the recording, there is no member of the public in the chamber, so we can't ask the public 
if there are any objections to the committee. We still need it. We still need the resolution and to exclude the press and the public from the committee. Yes. Councillor Tarvin and Councillor Derek, we're happy to move that way again. So we need the resolution to exclude the press and public from the committee the whole meeting for the reinstatement. Yes. Councillor Tarvin, Councillor Derek, Councillor Tarvin, Councillor Derek, 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 Councillor Formality to read the number of times member can speak is relaxed and the discussion can occur on items before motion to the committee. So there are two <coughs> two uh, matters in there. And I'll be getting it. We've got a brief resolution. Yep. In, in, in the, uh, two resolutions that have come out of the as a whole. The first one comes to. <laughs> the first, and I'll get the general to read out because he's got some lines there that I'll say that I'll <laughs> include not include the highest of school. No, no, you wouldn't have enough people than I'll ever be. The first general manager pertains to the fact that you uh, in the corner here. <laughs> Mayor, as the public comes in, the first item let the council resolve was in the dual naming of the Macquarie River. The Baptist Council and the council adopted the council advised Baptist Regional Council that it does not regard the dual naming of the Macquarie River as a matter for council. The second matter dealt with was a net waste tender for the collection of waste oil and council has accepted the net waste tender from Queen Away and um, for a two year term and council will advise net waste of the outcome. Thank you. So many. So that's all we need to do with those, isn't it? Yep, they're dealt with. That being the case, we can close the meeting, that's correct? So, therefore, we declare the meeting closed.